all these different things I think could be very problematic to the, de the, the spiritual development of creative people. What's the average age of a worship leader, you think? Are they typically younger? <laughs> but it's hard because people who are naturally gifted will get platformed before their integrity and their character is ready for that type of influence. You know, maybe it's just there to distinguish. This yeah. is an opposition where you clean up your life. Yeah. <laughs> this is, yeah. That's for the coffee ministry. <laughs> Bruce Lawn. Let's talk about partiality. That was an important point in distinction of Dr. Uh, Tony Evans's, I would say, correction for Kirk was that, you know. Kind of heat. Kind of heat, where a lot of brothers, you get in church and you think you're booming and you think you're popping and then you want to be treated a certain way. Yikes. Yeah, he wanted the uh, VIP he seating. He wanted the VIP seating. <laughs> we, you know, we don't got VIP seating at, at, at my church, but... I'm I'm doing something intentional uh, to 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 quell my own heart, like as like this YouTube stuff matters. Like, hey man, I'm I signed up to go serve in the children's ministry. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, I think yeah. we need more dads. You with, only did with, that because it's in the back. You can use you can enter through the back I door. Could, I can enter to the side. <laughs> you can use the celebrity door. door. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm really excited. And my my my, my one year old goes to the children's ministry. Um, so or she has yeah. Anyway, I hope so. I'm excited to uh, to be doing that. But I think it's interesting how many folks struggle who are of influence struggle with this and how how seldom do people really understand like the partiality and the partiality extended to people who are gifted to people that are on the worship team to people that are charismatic to people who have any degree of status to business owners in the church to elders in the church the yes. parking spot the separate parking spot for the pastor in the very front all these different things i think could be very problematic um to the de the, the spiritual development of creative people I always feel like I hear about susness happening on the worship team. Like, like not not just not in a specific church, but uh -huh. whenever you feel, whenever I hear I I hear something go happening, mm -hmm. I always feels like feel like it's the worship team. Do you mm. feel like there's always something there with like, <laughs> you know, they, they just sing really well, and it's good <laughs> to get them plugged in, and at least they're showing up to church. Like, what's <sighs> is it the talent? You're like, yeah, oh. I think I think sometimes you think that. It's generally speaking, serving is a great way to get plugged in. Yeah. Serving from a place of authority is a dangerous place to be when you aren't mature yet. Yep. And so people on the worship team tend to be in the spotlight and it could be difficult for your brain to decipher like whether they're serving or whether they're whether, pastoring. Whether they're serving, whether they're pastoring, whether yeah. their status is um to simply worship as unto the Lord or to be an influence in yeah. this space, and and and, the, and it's a dangerous part. I mean, the scriptures are clear. Like someone that is a a a um um someone that's someone that is a new convert shouldn't be an elder, right? So that yeah. line between like when people are in positions of authority and leadership, they shouldn't be new converts, and they shouldn't definitely shouldn't have their life in a mess. So it's yeah. it's, it's an interesting part. So like yeah, like I think if someone's out in front, mm -hmm. you know, and and is the face of something. Probably should you probably should make sure that they're solid and they're and they're yeah. walking with Jesus well. I know a lot of people or a lot of churches call it a youth or not a, a worship pastor. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they do that to distinguish, like, hey, yeah, because it'd be in line because you, you worship pastor or or is it like a worship pastor or a youth pastor? So typically, the, the worship pastor and the youth pastors aren't elders in the church. Well, I'm saying like right? worship pastor versus like saying worship leader, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's like a little bit more ambiguous, mm -hmm. whereas worship pastor. Like it holds more responsibility in the title, yeah, and so it requires, you know, maybe it's just there to distinguish. Yeah, this yeah. is an opposition where you clean up your life. Yeah, <laughs> is, yeah, that's for the coffee ministry. <clears throat> but man, it's yes, yeah, right. That's for the coffee <laughs> yeah. ministry. Guys, I want to make sure that you guys know about our upcoming podcast launch, October twentieth. The tickets for that are pinned up at seven dollars, and I would like to give you guys an exclusive preview. No one's seen these little previews of these conversations of some of the guests we've had, but I want to give you guys an exclusive preview so that you guys can get an idea of what to expect. I've always thought it was nasty to not put in two weeks. Mm -hmm. I quit that day. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even like, wasn't even in the mood to like sleep with these girls, but I felt like I had to. How come none of these personalities are ever doing anything benevolent? <laughs> so I think that there could be a spiritual, maybe potential demonic Got component it. that's in there that we haven't explored. The fact that I was single until I was 40 and yeah. I knew 
I was never going to plan a church being yep. a single guy. I wasn't going to, I wasn't about to set myself up. You know, and then I remember one time my uh, financial advisor at the time, she was like, hey, did you know you're spending more than you're making like every month? And I was like, oh, for real? And I'm supposed to, you know, perform yeah. this uh, production assistant. It's like, hey, here's a Viagra. Take it if you want to take it. Whoa. Don't if you don't. It's in your hand. It's yours. I teamed up with Moment for the exclusive live premiere of the anticipated Bless God podcast. And the tickets for that are only $7. When you get to the main page, click the yellow get ticket button, scroll down to the add-ons and throw in your ticket to the after party as well as some exclusive merchandise. And I will see you there. But it's hard because people who are naturally gifted mm -hmm. will get platformed before their integrity and their character is ready for that type of influence. Yeah, especially if you don't have a large, if the church doesn't have a large pool mm -hmm. to choose from mm -hmm. of good singers, mm -hmm. and they're like, mm, yeah, Carl's kind of yeah. out and about, but yeah, and Carl's it, and got a good voice. Right, Carl's got a good voice, and um, Carl leading worship <laughs> will be great for the Sunday morning experience, but probably not good for Carl's soul. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Yeah. We'll get great clips. We'll get we'll get some good stuff for Instagram. <laughs> but probably not ideal for his spiritual development in this local ecclesia. Yeah. I also think it's interesting within Christian music in general, and this isn't this this happens in any entertainment industry, but within Christian music in general, there's something about being in front of people that is very self-deceptive. And this is what I mean. I think when someone's standing and speaking, rapping, talking, preaching, singing, playing guitar yeah, in front of 3,000 people, 3,500 people, I don't know, especially an immature brain, if they can distinguish that these people aren't here for me. Whoa. <laughs> what a trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think your brain goes... These people are here for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I, I'm lit, guys. Like it's three thousand people here. Christian rappers. Christian that, uh, rappers have, have entered the chat. Right. That go to all the conferences. Y yo, <laughs> but, but yo. So what happens is within Christian music specifically, there's this thing called soft ticket sales. Right. Soft ticket sales are what we would call the equivalent of like the festival circuit. Yep. in the mainstream world, right? So, like, if a, if, a, if a rapper gets big, they'll be on Rolling Loud, and it'll kind of be the thing to catapult them and expose them to a bigger audience, collaboration. Mm. But you are, those folks aren't there to see you, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Beyonce's Versus, on the card. Yeah, yeah, whoever's on the card, yeah. <laughs> they're there to see the, the festival, not to see you. In Christian music, I think this is way amplified, and there's a lot of bags to get with, hey, I'm going to pop in and do worship on a Sunday morning. I'm going to do a rap here. I'm yeah. going to go to this conference. I'm going to go to that conference. I'm going to go to this festival. I'm going to go to that. And so I think what happens is your mind gets deceived and you start thinking that these people are here for you and they're not. They're there for the service. Yeah. And I'm thankful that when I started having like bigger platforms. Yeah. Uh, That's like my thumbnails. What do you mean? Make a thumbnail. Oh, yeah, yeah. All these people came here because of the thumbnail. thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> when people pull up, um, when I started, like the very first like taste I got of like being in front of large audiences wasn't mm -hmm. until I was in my late 20s. Mm -hmm. So it was like I remember being at the Rock Church and it was like, yo, we're doing Easter. Every service jam packed with 3,500 people and we want you to do a spoken word and we want you to do a rap. Yeah. Right? And I was sober enough to be like, this ain't about me, okay. bro. Like, this is not about me, right? And then, like, in the same window of time, like, Lecrae had me do, like, the Reach Life Institute with, like, not me, the breaks. Yeah. With uh, Francis Chan, him, right? And booming. there's Booming. 3,000 people, 2,000 people, right? And then we do Man Up Conference, like, a month later. Two, 3,000. I think they had almost 4,000 people at Man Up Conference. And so you just look out, and all you see is just, whoosh, just a sea of people, bro. It's nuts. It's just a sea so of people. So that never got to you? It, it got to me not not in the way it would have when I was 25. Yeah. By the time I'm 27, 28, I'm like, yo, the grind of this. And then, you know. You've already done Midland, Texas when it was only your name. And you were yes. like, ah. Yeah. Okay, there's yeah. 45 <laughs> people here. <laughs> Forget that. I've done shows for three witches in the, Salem, Oregon. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've That's done. Crazy. It's three witches and a warlock in Salem, Oregon, right? Like, At least I had an ROI. You it went into the story bank. You were able to use it later. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What what had the ROI was seeing 
that uh, these pe- people didn't one they didn't give a crap two they didn't buy merch and three like our oh. numbers didn't like jump up astronomically. So you're saying you know you're I mean? saying even when you did these big shows, was, you're sitting at your table afterwards and being like, hey, consequential. It was a consequential. Have you heard of the breaks? Yeah, like we had a uh, we had a window where we had you know I don't know uh, sold a couple hundred CDs at the Rock. And that was like, oh, that was cool. That was a cool deal. You know, that was dope. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't like life changing. It was just like, mm-hmm. yeah, like I'm a I'm a part of a worship experience, and this isn't about me. But this is yeah. at this is 2010 to 2013. I'm getting these looks. So I'm you know I'm in my late 20s at this point. You know what I mean? This yeah. is way down the yeah, road. Yeah, yeah. This isn't like. So it's more. You're more adapted. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm anchored. I'm adapted. What's I'm, the average age of a worship leader? You think? Are they? Typically younger is that is that well I mean in Kirk's situation he this, was a breakout star yeah so I would say mid twenties early twenties but he said yeah. he's been leading worship since he was eleven Oof. <laughs> as you're saying yeah. right yeah, yeah so imagine your entire life you're coming up as the guy on the stage do you think that gives someone like Kirk the confidence to actually pursue a career yeah totally and that's a beautiful part about the utility in yeah. the church because the utility of that of that is if you actually properly disciple people in the process, you don't just have them jump out and do the lead song. You don't just have them jump out and do their song. You don't just have them, you just, you in the back, doing background harmonies yeah, for yeah, years. Yeah. No, but that's what I mean. You know is what I mean? That, like, do you think that the, him leading worship at 11 years old was- I think it jacked him up. It, yeah. That, I think it jacked, him, I jacked up. him up. in a in a way that like, in a, in a chaotic way, mm-hmm. in a way that says- I can actually go pursue these crazy things. Whereas yes. if you meet other worship leaders that really put in their dues mm-hmm. behind the scenes and mm-hmm. then they're mid twenties, mid thirties, whatever, mm-hmm. they might be super talented, mm-hmm. but I don't know if you've met a lot of them. And they're like, no, I, I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't, I yeah. couldn't. Yeah. So, so there's, you know there's, 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 there's two extremes. So it almost benefited him well, but he, in a bad way. But the other side of that extreme is that the older guys have, probably ran the gamut of trying to be a musician and failed oh. and then they kind of need it and the church seldom is there to platform the guys with the character because now we just kind of need you around you can't go out and do your own thing on the side we yeah, need yeah. you here okay you're, <laughs> our, you're yeah. ours yeah. right <laughs> versus versus we're going to disciple you we're going mm-hmm. to keep you accountable we're going to tell you the truth about yourself yeah and we're also going to use this platform to launch you into whatever endeavors you may feel like you're called to, whether it's to write original music. And this, this is this is trash to say this, but this is actually where I think Bethel, and it's, <gasps> I hate saying this out loud because I don't like Beth, <gasps> but I actually think Bethel has done a good job oh, well. in, in platforming wow. people and allowing them to go on, <laughs> right? Okay, respect. Specifically with Maverick City, they've allowed people to platform, but I don't know what, what discipleship was happening there. Wait, Maverick City came from Bethel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dante came from Bethel. There's quite a few people that oh. came from Bethel and went on to do amazing things. But again, how much of that discipleship was happening? How much of that was like, well, clearly. What's, your, what's your prayer life like in this season? What's your, yeah. what's your, what's your, what's your purity like in this season, right? I don't but know. But they had a platform, and they were able to, and they were comfortable with promoting the names, not just like it's our worship yeah. team. Um, anyways, yeah, 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 yeah. like yeah. <laughs> like under the umbrella of Bethel Music, under the umbrella cool. of these things, they were able to, to 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 get other people out there, and you know, I guess for good or bad. I mean, maybe you would say that that wasn't bad, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe that was bad for the sake of that, but um, I think it's an interesting. I think it's an interesting dichotomy for creative people in the church because you can get platformed very, very easily before your character is ready. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what happened with Kurt, and that's pro- why he was, you know. So all the recent stuff, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, guys, like, there's people in Kirk's life. Like, there's real people in, yeah, in Kirk's yeah, real yeah, life yeah. that probably called him and was like, yo, like, you you was wilding for that bar. Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. And you I think that's, known. Yeah, you should have <laughs> known. And I think that's why he, uh, you know, I, I guess, I don't know if he technically apologized, but he definitely, um, but he definitely tried his best to clean it up. Yeah. You know? And it, it says that Simeon blessed God. 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 